welcome to week five of Bite Size Bible. This week we are thinking about miracles. Matthew introduces us to the miracles of Jesus in chapters eight and nine, mentioning ten miracles plus the comment. When evening came, many who were demon possessed were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with a word, and he healed the sick. Precisely how many people Jesus touched in this way remains unknown, but Jesus' own reply to John the Baptist's question, are you the one who was to come, or should we expect someone else, implies it was extensive. Jesus said, go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured. The deaf hear, and the dead are raised, and good news is preached to the poor. There is no doubt that the incidents recorded as miracles of Jesus actually happened, but many at that time and now question whether or not they were miracles. Miracles since, that, since the time began have led to disagreement and differences of opinion. Going back to the plagues of Egypt, not only did Pharaoh's heart become hard as he refused to let the Israelites go, but modern science has shown that there could easily have been causal connection between succeeding plagues, or that psychosomatic medicine today could explain some of Jesus' healings. This, however, in no way contradicts the biblical assertion that the escape from Egypt or the healings of Christ were not mighty acts of God showing his glory. The miracles are all stories of faith. They are parables enacted. Jesus is showing that God's kingdom has come and is overruling that of Satan. The gospel writers were not interested in any breach of nature's laws, but were interested in the fact that in these deeds, God's power itself was breaking through. Any cures were not an end to themselves, but a means to proclaim God's kingdom. Every time Jesus used the opportunity of the gathered observers to speak to them, if he could not speak about the kingdom, then he would not perform miracles. This largely explains why Jesus would not when requested, put on a miraculous show for Herod or the Pharisees, and his problems in Nazareth, where he would not perform miracles. The problem in Nazareth was that the people would not listen. If he could not proceed with his preaching and teaching, nor would he perform the deeds that proclaimed the kingdom. Miracles were not just for the amusement of the people. In the Old Testament, the New and today, the miracle is to show God's glory and concern for his people and lead to faith. So what are miracles? Miracles are events which dramatically reveal the living, personal nature of God, active in history as a redeemer, who saves and guides his people. Although the word miracle appears frequently, I think a much better description is signs and wonders, because that is what miracles are all about. When you read the list of miracles in Matthew 8 and 9, spend a few moments thinking about the words spoken and think what impact these words would have on those who heard them. The centurion's servant, I tell you the truth, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith calming the storm. You have little faith. Why are you so afraid? And the disciples? The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? The paralytic. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. The two blind men. He asked them, do you believe I am able to do this? According to your faith, will it be done to you? And their sight was restored. I think the words have a more long-standing impact than the miracles. 
As you picture a miracle, ponder the words and note within a group of witnesses there are different opinions and reactions. The healing of the paralytic. Some observers called Jesus a blasphemer, while others were filled with awe and praised God. In Luke 8, Jesus healed a man with demon possession. The reaction to the healing was that the locals asked Jesus to leave because they were overcome with fear, while the healed man begged to go with him. When Elijah confronted the prophets of Baal, the result was that all the people fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, he is God! While Queen Jezebel immediately sent a message to Elijah, threatening to kill him. It was after Jesus, on the Sabbath in the synagogue, healed a man with a shriveled hand, and that the Pharisees began plotting his death. Jesus was very much aware they were dangers associated with miracles. On two occasions, the Pharisees and Sadducees came asking Jesus for a miraculous sign from heaven, which he refused to give. But amongst his words of reply, he tells them to look to Jonah. Three days and nights in the big fish on his way to Nineveh. It was not the miracle, but the words of witness that brought repentance. Following the healing of a demon-possessed man, Jesus was accused of being in the employ of Beelzebub, the devil. Jesus recognised and warned us against false prophets and healers. False Christs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive. The book of Deuteronomy recognised that other prophets can perform miracles, but the children of Israel were warned not to follow them. You must not listen to the words of that prophet or dreamer. A danger we must heed. There are miracles in the Old Testament and they appear more prominently at certain times. Times when the Israelites were in greatest danger of abandoning their faith and trust in Yahweh. The time of the Egyptian slavery and the crossing of the Red Sea. Moses and the time in the wilderness. Elijah and Elisha and the time of Israel's massive apostasy. The Babylonian captivity in the time of Daniel and Esther. The early Christian church. The beginning of the church and the need for early growth. We must remember that miracles can be seen to prove nothing. Even in the time of Jesus, they were ambiguous. Among the observers, different opinions will be present, but there is always an opportunity for a bold person to step up and open up the gospel as St Paul did in Lystra. On his first missionary journey, Paul stopped at Lystra, a rural outpost in, outpost in modern-day Turkey. Arriving in the city, he encountered a man who had been lame from birth. The Lord used him to heal this man, and this healing amazed the whole town. Paul and Barnabas had the chance to share the gospel with many who had never heard before. But... Just when it looked like there was an open door for ministry, opponents arrived in the city and stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city. Left for dead, Paul abandoned the city next day. Perhaps the most telling statement concerning miracles comes from Jesus himself. He said to them, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead, which he did a while later. Next time you see or want a miracle, remember it will only be for the glory of God and to lead others to faith through the words that you or someone else speaks. Music